Greetings from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs in Reading, England. I would say up on the bench we have this Fender Red Knob, but we don't. It's way too heavy to get on the bench. It's a monster of an amp. This is the Fender The Twin Red Knob version. And um, the customer has brought it in to me today for a complete revalve. So I thought it would be a great time to show you how to bias this amplifier, which is uh, quite fun. Anyway, they're a bit maligned, these um, red knobs, but I think they've actually got a great sound. I think it's probably because they've got printer circuit boards in that people don't like them. But I've always found them, you know, they're pretty good value for money and they sound great. So let's get the chassis out of this one up on the bench and we can have a look at how to bias it. Here we are with the chassis out and I've removed the customer's power tubes, which are here. A um, bit of a mixed bag here. We have a pair of groove tubes and a completely different pair here of, I don't know what these are, what are these? Edicron. That's a pair of, that's an Edicron 6L6 and this is a different valve completely, 6L6 GT. I did put these on the meter and they're not at all well matched, so I don't know the history behind this set of tubes. Anyway, they're going to go, and instead I'm fitting a brand new quad of JJ6L6GC. We'll do that in a moment, but first of all I want to point out to you on this amplifier the fact that Fender have provided, unusually, a way of biasing it. And we can see that here. We'll be having a look at this in a little bit more detail um, but there's a place here to measure the bias and, a, and an output bias adjustment pot and there's a place to balance the balance the two output tubes as well um, so we'll be getting into that in a moment but first of all I'll get these new JJ fitted um, I think I'll put my two Euro tubes bias probes in here as well just so that we can compare the bias probe method with uh, with this method here where we're going to be putting a voltmeter on the test points. So join me again when I've got that set up. Let me show you the setup now that I've put together. So I've installed a pair of 6L6 GCs, the two outside tubes, and I've brought those back to my two Euro tubes bias meters. I'm also ready with my multimeter on a 200 millivolt scale to measure the biased test points here by putting in my meter into here. So now we'll switch the amp out of standby and uh, see what the status is with the bias on this amp. So looking at our Euro tubes meters, we, ha we have 465 volts on the plate and um, 15 milliamps through one tube and 11 or 12 through the other. What I think I'll do is I'll bias it on on these meters here and then we'll check over to here and see what the um, the voltmeter says. So I'm going to stick my screwdriver into the bias adjustment. Have a look over here. I'm going clockwise and uh, seems like the right hand one's coming up and the left hand one staying fairly still. I'm not quite sure how the bias works on this amp. I'll be absolutely honest with you and say I've never biased one of these. But I suspect that once we set up one one of these, the, uh, the output balance control there will allow, will allow us to bring the other one in. Anyway, the correct bias for a 460 volt plate voltage is about um, 45 milliamps on this. I like to bias a little bit cool, so I'll probably go at 40. Okay, and I can immediately see that the bias control has not enough range. Let's just now go over to this uh, balance adjustment and see if that works as I expect it to, to bring in 
the left hand meter now and turning that clockwise yes I think well I think what we've got here is two bias controls one for each pair and they've labelled one balance because this isn't touching the right one at all and the right one didn't touch the left one so I'm turning this clockwise and as you can see I can get a very accurate balance between the two but it's all a little bit low so I'm going to have to investigate now how to alter the range on this so that we can get a bit more bias current out of it. Well I had a look at the schematic and um, realised that in order to bring the bias back into some sort of sensible level I have to adjust two fixed resistors. Now the first resistor is R210 on this subboard here which I had to take out by undoing all the, the nuts and so on on the back panel. It actually wasn't too bad, it only took a few minutes to uh, flip that board over. And I've got a couple of crock clips on there which come back to my resistance decade box. And I've got 180k dialed in on the box with a, with a 1 meg there, so effectively the box is kind of open circuit at the moment until I turn that 1 meg down to zero then it will become 180k. So I've put 180k in parallel with the 100k R210 and that will adjust the bias on one of the valve sets. So at the moment it's 30 milliamps which is the most we could get out of this. Now I'm just going to literally turn that to zero, in other words put 180k in parallel with 100k and you can see that's gone up to 49 milliamps which is a lot better. Um, I've got the bias pot at maximum current so I may just put, let's try putting 150k in here and that's gone up to 53 milliamps. Of course I can bring that back now with the bias pot. That's that. Now in order to get the other one to do the same we're going to have to jump across another resistor. I'll do that now and then I'll uh, rejoin you and show you which one I've done. Now that I've taken the crock clips off I just want to point out to you that first resistor, which is this R210 here. And now the second resistor is R213, which is hard to see, but it's in there. And now I'm going to do the same trick. So we're on the right hand meter this time. And I'm just going to take my 1 meg there and turn it to zero, putting 150k across R213. So let's see what that does. Uh, here we go now and as you can see that nicely goes up to 54 milliamps as well. So the secret here is to um, jump a resistor across R210 and R213. I've put 150k which suits me. Um, but you may find a different value. You don't need one of these resist resistance decade boxes. You can just swap out. You know, I could put some resistors on the crock clips there and um, just try various values in there to see which one works. So I'm going to now solder in those two resistors. Then I'll come back to you and we'll double check that we're getting some decent bias current now. OK, here we are. I've put 150k across R210 and 150k across R213. Let's now switch on the standby and here we go um, 63 milliamps which was higher than our um, resistor on our decade box not quite sure why and what I'll do now is put in my screwdriver into the bias adjustment which is here. I want to be quite careful here because the board's a bit kind of balanced, I don't want to short anything out. And I'm turning that anti-clockwise now and that's bringing down this one here to 44 milliamps and I'll go in the other one anti-clockwise again and that brings that one down now to 45 milliamps too. get that down a bit more. Yeah, there we go. Oop, a bit too much. 45 and 45. So there we go. 
nicely biased. Not particularly easy, I think you'll agree, swapping out those resistors. But uh, there we go. So next thing to do is to pop this board back in, make sure everything's all right, and we can move on from there. I've put that board back now, and having adjusted those two fixed resistors, I want to now show you what happens when you try to adjust the bias using a multimeter put into the bias adjustment points at the back. There is the multimeter on the left. So um, there are two places you can put the multimeter. One's called bias, which you can see between the two probes, and the other is called balance, which you can see between the black probe and uh, and the test point to the right of that. And they are marked rather kind of cryptically, naught volts on the balance and 0.4 volts on the bias. I think what they want you to do is to put the probes in the balance and adjust the balance until, until it gets to naught volts. Anyway, for the moment I've got the bias probes in the bias and you can see that it gives 41 millivolts there so I'm guessing they're measuring across a 1 ohm resistor and uh, that would be 41 milliamps. Don't forget we've only got one tube in each side. If I were to put two tubes in here I suspect we would get double this current and you would have to divide it by half to get the milliamps per tube. Now I did put the probes into the balance and set it up so that there was naught volts on the balance. I'll show you that in a moment but look what happens when I do <laughs> the tubes become sort of somewhat imbalanced. I mean, it's not dramatic, but it's 45 versus 39. Um, so let me just show you that. I'll, uh, I'll take the probe out of here and put it into balance, which is here. And now you can see we've got, you know, point, we've got nothing. We've got 0.3 of a millivolt. That, and that's because I adjusted the balance pot to give me zero volts there which I think they are probably asking you to do. However, when you do that, you get a slight imbalance in the, in the tube. So whatever they've done there is not particularly good. I'm going to go, it's good enough, you know, if that's all you had, that's fine. However, I'm going to go back into the balance now and adjust that to get the correct balance on my two Euro tube meters. I'm just going a little bit clockwise. Now I reckon they're balanced. Look, they're 44 each. So that's what I call balanced. And just out of interest, let's go back in on our measuring point here. It's quite hard to do this with one hand and hold the camera. There we go. And you can see, you know, we've got six millivolts. We know, again, that's not very much. 6 millivolts, but um, there you go, for what it's worth. Um, that's how you would use the multimeter to, to adjust the bias on this amp. Well, there you go, we finally managed to bias that monster. I think you'll agree it was a bit of a mission. I particularly dislike it when you have to take fixed resistors out to change the bias. And it was made doubly difficult on that amp by the fact we had to take the board out and turn it upside down to work on those resistors. But anyway, job done, nicely biased, nice sounding amps I think, and great value for money. So join me again on the next video. Thanks for watching.